Welcome to Skills in Algebra Part 2 and we're going to look at uh, what we can do with the algebraic expressions that we've been playing with and here's a red hot burning question here can you do all the basic operations with these little algebraic expressions and anyway does it make sense to try to do that well I think you probably know by now that we're using in algebra pro numerals letters standing for missing numbers in puzzles and in describing patterns and so on so yeah they are just numbers and what we need to do is be able to operate with that missing number and see if we can do what up here products quotients that's divisions and substitution replacing the letter with a particular number in particular cases well how about that let's have a look around the screen here's ordinary multiplication five times six what would three lots of 2x be? You reckon? 6x? This is what we're going to investigate now. And a squared times 2ab. Oh, we've got some a's together. So we're going to investigate that and uh, see how far we can go. We've, we've started some big thing here in Algebra Land. Lots of work with uh, pro numerals and algebraic expressions. Come down the bottom here. What about 8 divided by 12? 8 is... 2 times 4, and 12 is 3 times 4. We can divide top and bottom by 4 or cancelling, so it comes to the fraction 2 thirds. Wow, that works okay. What about this? 2x squared on x to the fifth. x squared means x by x. x to the fifth is x times itself, though there are five terms there. And we could cancel them. And we'd have 2 over x cubed. Hey, that'll work because x just stands for a number it's a pro numeral and so we've got these little dudes here we might have a go out later on and see if we can do some divisions there with uh, uh, pro numerals and in algebra land okay so it's exciting stuff come down and let's uh, get started and the screen clippings here are from Hayes and Harris publications so you need to have their book handy by there okay so let's have a look at products 2a times 3a well, we've got to keep like terms together, so 2 by 3 will give us 6. And if you wrote it right out, a by a would give you a squared. Although you might be able to see that from up the top there. Because this little dude over here is saying, with practice, you shouldn't need to write out all those steps. Okay, so you've got 6a squared. So I think what we've got to do is have a little rule here. We want the numbers or the coefficients together okay that's two times three can be done both known numbers numbers together the particular pro numerals together because they are the same number they're standing for a missing but same number so where you see a in a problem will always mean the same value if it's specified in a problem as two wherever you see little a you'll put two that's our system, isn't it, that we've been using, patterning and so on. Let's have a look at this one. Neg 3x squared times 4xy. So it's neg 3, and there's another down there, and then there's x squared, and then there's an x and a y. So let's multiply the numbers together. That's neg 12. The x's, there's 2, another one is 3, so it's x cubed over all times y. We can't jumble up the x's and the y's because they are pro numerals. They are letters standing for different numbers now. So we've got the term neg 12 x cubed y. And remember, you'll put the x earlier in the alphabet and then the y. Okay, how's that look? Make sense? Come down and uh, I'll give you a chance to have a go now. And uh, we'll have a go at algebraic quotients for a start. Quotients. A quotient is a division. So we're dividing two algebraic terms here, they, that means they've got letters in them, pro numerals, by each other. So let's write it out. We've got 6 by x by x by x and 3 by x. So we can start to cancel here, dividing top and bottom by 3, 3 goes into 3 goes once, 3 into 3 goes once, 3 into 6 goes 2, like you would for ordinary numbers. So now we've got left in the top line only x by x, so it's 2x squared, in the bottom line only one so the answer is 2x squared do you get it in a while we're going to try and do it without writing out all the x's 
you might start to see a system. If there's one here and three there, when you cancel them, what will you have left? So you might start to see a shortcut there. What about this one up here? This looks complicated. Let's set it out with a system though. Four by x and two y's multiplied to give y squared. 12 x squared y. And then we can start cancelling. And the fours go into the 12 three times. And we've got some x's going out there, one, one x, and then a y and a y. And so what have we got left? We've got one y only left in the top line, and there's a three and an x left in the bottom line. Okay, you get the idea of what we're doing here. And just remembering, the letters are standing for numbers, so we can do with them what we normally do with numbers. We've got to keep them together, y's with y's, x's with x's. Okay. Let's come down and have a look at uh, doing some now, now that we've done the quotient one. So here's question one, two, and three. I want you to pause the presentation, have a go, and toggle forward because I've got the answers down below, and you can check your work or look it up in the back of the book there. All right, come down now and let's look at the rest of the set. There it is, question four. So have a go, and uh, I'll show you the answers now. There they are, 4D, remember from Hayes and Harris Publications, they want to get their book handy by there. Okay, mark your work, toggle back and forward as you do the problems, so you can check as you go. Let's go on, what else can we do with these algebraic expressions? Well, this is starting to get interesting now. Generalizing arithmetic, or finding patterns in working out problems so that you can come back and use the same pattern or formula again. So here we are, find the cost of X bananas at 30 cents each. Seven bananas at 30 cents would be seven lots of, for times in, 30 cents. So X bananas at 30 cents would be X times 30 cents. So we're trying to set up a system here where we can describe problems in everyday life with our algebraic expressions. So 30x, we always put the number in front as a convention or a system in algebra land. So what's this saying to people? What's the purpose of this? This is saying, if you give me any number of bananas you want to buy, there it is there, all we have to do is multiply it by 30 to get the total cost. So we could make a little equation. Cost is, 30 times the number of bananas you want to buy. Hey, that could be useful. Okay, so if people keep coming along and asking us what it's going to cost them, we know what to do. It's a bit of a simple example, but there are other more interesting ones coming up. The change from $50 when buying Y books at $6 each. Let's try Y is 5. 5 books at $6 each would be $30 and the change would be 50 minus 5 times 6. You're going to bracket that to make sure you do that first. So buying Y books, your change at $6 each, your change would be 50, take away the cost of the books, which is Y lots of 6, so lots of means times, Y times 6, so it's 50. And now we put the 6 in front in algebra lab, we put the numbers as coefficients or in front of the y term. Now we have a formula for somebody's change. Your change from $50 will equal 50 times minus 6 times the number of books you buy. Okay, a little formula to describe the general pattern. That's called generalizing arithmetic. You're adding and subtracting. Your arithmetic can be generalized or a pattern formed so that we can use it for all such problems. Handy stuff, algebra, isn't it? Very handy. Okay, come down, and I want you to do the same thing here in 4E. Okay, find the total cost of buying that, and so all with, uh, with numbers and then changing to letters. Okay, so think through it. Okay, I want you to pause the presentation there, have a look, have a go, and toggle forward on the video for the solutions down below. Okay, I'll show you the rest of these now. 8, 9, and 10. 
So it's getting to work with pronumerals so that we can tell people what the pattern is that they might use over and over again for that problem. Okay, let's look at the solutions now, or rather just the answers. It doesn't show you how to do it. Okay, so there they are, there. Check these last few. Oh, these are interesting. Can you understand those? You might talk to your classmates and your teacher about that. All right, one little thing left to do, which is very exciting. Algebraic substitution. Hey, what does that mean? Well, I think we can unpack it. Algebraic, so we've got algebraic expressions, pro numerals, and substitution means we're putting numbers in place of them and seeing what they come to for different numbers for the letters. Okay, let's have a look. If A is 2, B is neg 1, and C is 3, evaluate. Now, here we, here we are. This means find the value of. So it means we can come up with a number. Evaluate, find the value of. Okay, let's see how it works. So let's have 3A take 2B. Means 3 lots of A take 2 lots of B. So in place of A, we said A was 2. So we can substitute it in. And in place of B, 2B would be neg 2 times neg 1. Neg 2B. So that's 6. Negative times a negative is a positive, plus 2 is 8. So we found the value of that general algebraic expression here for a particular pair, A is 2 and B is neg 1. What about C squared plus B? There we are, C squared plus B. Go and find C. If C is 3, it'll be 3 squared. And if B is neg 1 still, there'll be a neg 1 there. So squaring 3 is 9, take, add a negative will be a positive times a negative is a negative. So that's take 1 is 8. Do you get it? You're getting quite uh, a number of skills here now, if you can remember how to do them. And uh, the glory of this one is, of course, what if you had a triangle and you're trying to find its area, which is half um, the area of the rectangle. So we know... It's a half base times height. Now, as people come along with different bases and different heights, this little formula can tell you quite quickly what the area is. Hey, that'd be good. You could set up a spreadsheet. You mightn't have done that yet, or spreadsheeting, so that you could do the problem over and over again. So this idea of creating a formula and substituting into it for different values of the pronumerals or letters can be quite handy. I think you can see that. Let's come down now and have a look. And here's the last little set of exercises for uh, uh, this uh, little section here. And we'll have a look at, at, at another exciting part of this section in a minute. Okay, so I want you to try to evaluate, replace the letters with the numbers there, and uh, pause it, have a go, and I'll show you the answers now. So here are question one and two. Did you get all those right? What's the positives and negatives? They can be a bit tricky. You need to remember your work with the directed numbers from before. Okay, let's go on and see some uh, interesting examples. Here's a bit more complicated one. Okay, so we're going to evaluate this if we know particular values of the pronumerals or letters. So carefully replace P by three. Take, oh, look out, Q is neg 2. Use a bracket there for negatives. That's important. And R is neg 4. Use a bracket there. Because look at what's going to happen here. A neg times a negative is a positive. That's 3 plus 2 over negative 4. 5 over negative 4. And we generally write the negative just even with the line out the front. Okay. Get the idea we're working with uh, more complicated expressions now because later on in science particularly, you might get some fairly complicated formulas and physics and um, chemistry and so on. So we need to be able to do quite difficult ones. So let's have a look at this dude here. That looks fairly complicated. So we've got Q squared. So Q is neg 2. So what's the bracket with a negative? Because we want to square not just 2, but the whole of neg 2. So neg 2 by neg 2. On the calculator, you must use bracket as well. And then we've got plus P is 3 by R, replacing it in here, 
and in here, so using a bracket, very important, so we remember that negative sign, and in the bottom, P plus bracket for the negative number R, negative number, neg 4, 4R. Okay, so here we are, neg 2 squared is 4, 3 times a negative 4 plus 3, so this is negative 12, and 3 plus neg 4. Let's just remind ourselves of this on the number line. There's positive 3, take 4, there's neg 3, back to there. Oh, it'll be neg 1, won't it? Because we're going neg 4 backwards. Let's remember how that works. So we're getting this number here in the bottom line. 4 take 12, same idea, will end up on the negative side, neg 8 over neg 1. A negative divided by a negative is a positive. I hope you remember how that comes about. You might check with your classmates and teachers about how that rule works. Okay, let's go down and have a look. And uh, this is our last set of problems here. And there are some good ones in there. These are just general practice now and uh, right down to here, but there's one there, the area of a triangle. As I mentioned, you can start to see why algebraic expressions are useful in science and in everyday life here. You're finding the density of an object in science, in physics, is mass over volume. So you're going to replace M and V with different values depending on the situation the density of different objects or blocks and stuff. Okay, so can you see it's getting to be an important area here now, Algebra Land. So I want you to pause the presentation and have a go at these problems. Try all of them, that's best, you need practice. And uh, I'll show you the answers now. Oh, hang on, I left out the bottom one. There you are, question eight. Okay, so make sure you can see that one. That's a good one, that's a physics problem. Okay, now I'll show you the answers. Okay, how are you going? I hope you're excited, because you're building up a lot of skills here, and you can see they're going to be important later on. Okay, well, I hope you uh, enjoy yourself there. There's more coming in uh, the algebra, uh, skills in algebra presentations, so I'll catch you then. Cheers for now.